Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. At the EU summit this week, there was a lot of talk about Europe's role in the world. Can Europe deal with the growing foreign policy challenges? There are conflicts right around the corner in Belarus and the southern Caucasus. There are the ongoing standoffs with Turkey, China and Russia. And there is, of course, a big wonderment about where political culture in the United States is headed after this week's first presidential debate. Yet, Europe was rather busy fighting skirmishes against enemies within. The long-standing rule of law row between Brussels and Hungary reached fever pitch this week when Vice Commission President Vera Jourova called out Prime Minister Orban for building a sick democracy. That prompted a sharp rebuke by Orban, who accused her of attacking his democratically elected government and demanded her resignation. Instead, Jourova doubled down on Hungary's record when she presented the EU's first ever rule of law report. When the rule of law is absent, when it is at risk, there is a concrete impact on every single one of our lives. I know this firsthand because I myself grew up in an authoritarian regime without the rule of law. This means that equality before the law was an illusion. There were people more equal than others. It is unlikely that Orban and his partner in crime Poland will change their behavior, despite a growing chorus of critics, especially in the European Parliament which makes it a certainty that this long-standing issue will not disappear from the political agenda anytime soon. Another EU evergreen of that sort is Brexit. Since the withdrawal agreement was sealed, signed and delivered, the British government has done everything to alienate their former EU partners at rapid speed. That culminated in London's determination to invalidate crucial parts of the agreement retrospectively. After the UK refused to walk it back, Brussels had enough. Therefore, this morning, the Commission has decided to send a letter of formal notice to the UK government. This is the first step in an infringement procedure. It seems that political culture in Britain, and in Hungary for that matter, is incompatible with political culture in the EU. Speaking of culture, the real one. The arts and entertainment sectors were brutally hit by the coronavirus, and there is no end of this disruption in sight. It does not only affect creative professionals, but all of us. People in charge of the sector's well-being are worried, but also optimistic in the long run. Joining me now is Ernesto Otone Ramirez, Assistant Director General for Culture at UNESCO. Welcome to the program. Good to have you on. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So the impact of the coronavirus on the cultural sector is felt around the world. There are events cancelled, theaters and concert halls closed, artists struggling to survive and much more. What is the most worrisome for you? Well, it's the first time that we have a global crisis in the culture ecosystem. And the most uh, difficult time is for the livelihoods. It's to understand that right now you have one third of all creators, artists in the world that don't have money to live. And that's become very complicated to imagine how we're going to endure this situation for four, six, eight months more. There is the impact on creative professionals, but there's also an impact on those who consume and enjoy culture. Now, with the access to culture seriously impeded, we've seen cultural events moving online instead. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Everything is not black and white, to be very frankly. And uh, yes, you have seen that there is a large access of uh, a portion of the world who had for the first time the opportunity to get online some uh, cultural aspects. But the issue is that 50% of the world doesn't have access to internet. So that's an issue. So what we are trying to push in some regions is how we use also television and radios to maintain, uh, inform the, 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 the audiences. I know that a lot of ministries of culture have been reaching out to UNESCO for guidance on dealing with the disruption of the cultural sector. What are you telling them? 
What we are trying to do is to put forward all the good practices that are putting in place in many countries. And, uh, and we see that there is a lot to share, to contribute and to dialogue because there is great experience, not only at national level, also at local level with the cities. You are a former Minister of Culture yourself of Chile with a background in cultural management. Let me ask you this. Could this crisis, even if we don't know when it's over, could this crisis be a source of inspiration for the future? I think so. And that's something important. And I think that we will be in a, turn, uh, a turning moment of the culture policies in the world. We have to be more prepared with resilience, but also with a little bit of hope that we can do things better. All right, Ernesto Otono Ramirez, Assistant Director General for Culture at UNESCO. Thank you so much for talking to us. This is my pleasure. Be safe. A major role in culture is played by fashion, at least in France. This week, the body positive fashion show took place in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. Organizers described it as a movement of kindness towards oneself and others. Whatever the age, whatever the body type, whatever the disability, whatever the disease. The message is body positivity and more diversity in fashion. Well, diversity is never wrong in fashion or in politics. That does it for us today. I'm Stefan Grobe. Thank you for watching. Have a good week.